Today on the channel, we're doing something that's been requested a whole bunch. I'm here for you today. We're doing chuck roast, just like a brisket. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name is Jake. You're watching Roman Cook. Today on the channel, we're doing something that's been requested on multiple occasions. And hey, you ask, I deliver. I'm here for you. And today we're doing a chuck roast cooked just like a brisket. Now, go big or go home. So I got a four pound chuck roast. This thing's a monster. And this whole process started last night. So let me show you how we did that. Essentially, the great thing about a chuck roast is that we do not have to do any trimming. Went to Costco, picked this up, and I picked up two. This was almost eight pounds for two of these pieces of meat. We opened it up. This is just choice grade and no binder. I got some Goldie's brisket rub. This stuff is delicious. I had a little bit left. I decided, hey, let's put that on this. So we gave a good heavy coating on the top, the sides, and the bottom. And then I just put it on a rack, threw it in the fridge. We did a dry brine. Dry brining helps get that seasoning and flavor and the salt pulls out some of that moisture and then sucks all the flavor back inside. So we're gonna get ourselves a nice flavorful chuck roast when we're done. And this morning, after about 14 hours of dry brining, I came outside, we fired up the yoder, I put in our smoke tube and some Bear Mountain oak pellets, lit up our smoke tube. The one thing to remember about a smoke tube is that make sure you get a good light ticket torch, light up the front and let that flame burn for a little while. That way it won't go out for you later. Then we turned on the pit. I set it at 200 degrees. I started to let it come up to temperature and I went and I grabbed this chuck roast and threw it on right away. It was ice cold out of the fridge. And now we are at about five hours later. So I haven't touched it. It's been sitting at 200 just to get a whole bunch of smoke into it. Now we're gonna to start to ramp up our temperatures. I'm actually gonna dial it up to about 250. Let me bring in and show you what we're looking at. So if we look at this guy, you can see a little bit of fat rendering out. I don't even know the temperature of this. I haven't opened it in five hours. I haven't even sprayed it. So we're sitting at 144 right now. So we got a ways to go. But since we're open, we're gonna to start to spray now. This is just 50-50 water, apple cider vinegar. Make sure we get this backside here. All the way around. And because I've neglected this a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit extra on here just to help tenderize that top. And that's it. Our smoke tube has already gone out. We don't have to worry about that. From this point on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray probably every 45 minutes just to make up for not spraying it in five hours. And then as we get close to that 190, we'll probably wrap. So believe it or not, it's actually been nine hours. This is a solid chunk of chuck and it's just taken some time. You can't rush barbecue. Now, Remember, I did spend six hours at 200, so I really wasn't putting that much heat into it in the beginning. It is looking absolutely delicious. Let me show you what we're looking at. We're at about 163, 164, depending on where we go. 161, 166. So we're coming up to temperature pretty nicely. I have been spraying. For the first little while, I went about every 45 minutes and then for the last two hours every hour. It doesn't take a lot now. I put some moisture into it just to deal with the crust that had built up. It got a little bit tough in the beginning because I didn't touch it for the first five hours. Uh, but after I got a little bit of moisture on there, it softened right back up, so I was happy with that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dial this guy up to 275 and we're gonna start to push it along. I'm only gonna come up about another maybe 10 degrees or so and then we're gonna put it into a wrap and really speed up the process. But I started early, wanted to take my time with this one, so we're just gonna ride it out. So, when I said I was gonna cook this just over four pound chuck roast like a brisket, I'm living up to what I'm saying. It's 11 and a half hours. We're just at about 170, 175 in some spots. Now, I let it roll for a very long time at 200 to build up a nice bark but it's taking its sweet time. But I will tell you, it is looking absolutely delicious. It really is looking good. And if we look at it, depending on where we're at, we're pretty tender. We're 172, 180, let me get back, 170, 172. Sorry, gotta be in the middle. So we're in 
really good shape there. I mean, look, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Got a nice bark on the outside of it. Great color, but we're not putting any more flavor on the outside of this. So what we're gonna do here is wrap this guy up and let it finish up. I'm gonna put a little tallow on the bottom here. Maybe slightly more than a little. And we're gonna put this right on the bottom. And our thing, our goal here is to really wrap this up nice and tight. Really wanna keep that tallow right next to it. And we'll throw this guy back on. Now we've done most of the work. We're gonna dial this up. I'm gonna go up to 300. That's just gonna help speed it up a little bit. I'm getting hungry. It's taking a little longer than I thought it would. I'm not gonna lie, but it'll be done soon and I'll show you what it looks like. Good morning, sunshine. So I'm sure you didn't expect to see me the next day. Before I can get into the story behind that, we gotta talk about the contest. So every video I do a contest. All you gotta do is you gotta be subscribed to the channel, you gotta give the video a thumbs up, and you gotta comment with specific hashtags for that video. For this video, it will be hashtag Yoder, hashtag Chuck Roast. Leave a comment down below using those hashtags, and next week I will use a random comment picker, and you have a chance to win a $25 gift card to abbbq.com. And if you happen to be a Patreon member, it starts at five bucks, I'll double it, and I'll make it 50 bucks. Pretty good deal. Let's check out last week's winner. So last week was the Detroit pizza video. Let's look at our winner here. The hashtags were Detroit pizza and hashtag Woodfire pizza. 33 comments use that hashtag. Troy V is the winner. That was a darn good looking pizza and it had that crunch in the crust. Gonna have, me make, gonna have to make me that one day. Hashtag Woodfire Pizza, hashtag Detroit Pizza Troy. I will comment on your comment. You can email me, I'll confirm it's you and we'll get you that $25 gift card to appbq.com. Let's go back to the video. So let's explain to you why we're at the next day. Got a couple confessions to make. Number one, I was uh, off by one hour in my last update. I said it was 11 and a half hours, it was 10 and a half hours. I started an hour later than I originally anticipated. But more importantly, what happened here is that I was shooting in a couple other videos and after I wrapped this thing and I dialed the Yoder up to 300, it climbed way quicker than I expected. Next thing I knew, it was like 212. So at that point, the chances of it still being brisket are pretty slim to none. So I decided to try something different. I put this in a rest overnight on the Yoder set to 150, and I wanted to see what happened when I ran it overnight. A common question in my last brisket video was, you know, my oven doesn't go down to 150, what can I do? So I am testing some other things for you. I'm gonna get into that into another video, but I just wanna let you know that this may not be brisket anymore. However, Hey little guy, I'm trying to film. However, I've got a backup plan just in case. Let's have a look at this. So as you can see, it's got great bark on it. It is quite tender as we expect. So it certainly looks delicious. Let's see what happens when we cut into this. quite tender as we expect and it's almost falling apart I mean it is falling apart right at the seam there Let's see if I can get in a little deeper past this big chunk of fat here still looks good mm, wow better flavor than I expected hold up I got some ideas here this is not going to be a brisket we got a backup plan right here, and let me tell you, what I'm about to, to make is gonna be absolutely delicious. So good that I need to have two of them. A little butter. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm quite uh, shocked at how good that tastes. Take that, I'll take that. Say hello to my little friend. Oh, 
That is a sous vide gun in case you're wondering. Look what we got going on. Just to keep my hands clean. So excited. This is gonna taste, I mean, look, it just shreds apart nicely. Make sure you get yourself some of that bark on top. Oh, look, got some board sauce. And last but not least, got some W sauce. If you guys haven't tried this stuff, this stuff is absolutely delicious. It's like Worcestershire sauce on steroids. You could do a barbecue sauce on this if you wanted. I think that's gonna be delicious. Make sure you get all my board sauce here. Now, tell me that doesn't look like a thing of beauty. Mm-hmm. Hold on, I gotta just make sure that's so good. Wow. Well worth the work, my friends. Not quite the poor man's brisket that I thought it would be, but let me tell you, let's be honest, Chuck, I figured out, is more expensive than brisket right now, so it's really not even poor man's brisket anyhow. But this is something you gotta try. This is absolutely delicious. Took a twist at the end, but I'm gonna be tearing up these sandwiches, so we gotta wrap up. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, do so below. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.